Mumbai Trans Harbour Link is an engineering megastructure. Spanning almost 22 km, it is the longest sea bridge to be constructed in, in India and will link Mumbai city with the mainland Navi Mumbai. The plan for undertaking a horizontal connectivity infrastructure in Mumbai region has been in the making for over a decade and in the last few years it has gathered momentum. The six-lane bridge will start from Suri in South Mumbai and terminate at Chale near Navaseva. Implemented by the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority, MMRDA, MTHL has been categorized as a regional development project. Among the major benefits of the project will be the economic development of Navi Mumbai and part of Raiga district, as well as faster connectivity with the upcoming Navi Mumbai International Airport. Once fully operational, the sea bridge is expected to provide a major fillip to the connectivity and economic development of the Mumbai metropolitan region. The project is being executed by a consortium of LNT and IHI, as well as startup projects and Devu joint venture, and has received funding from Japan International Cooperation Agency. In this episode, we were joined by Indian Administrative Service Officer SVR Srinivas, who shared the significance of the project. With over two decades of experience in overseeing infrastructure projects as an administrator, Mr. Srinivas in June completed his tenure as MMRDA Commissioner and spearheaded the project which is expected to be functional by end of this year. So today at ET Infra, we are joined by MMRDA Commissioner Mr. Srinivas. Now he is the person who is spearheading the uh, Mumbai Trans Harbour Link uh, project and is the key person who would uh, you know disclose to us detail to us at where we are in terms of the you know, project phase so mr srinivas yeah. uh, could you just give us you know a brief uh, to our uh, audience where the project is currently is and you know, how how is it going about see first let me tell you this is mumbai you can see mumbai right this mumbai is an island city now we are on the mumbai trans harbor link and go all the way 22 kilometers and you reach the mainland of india Okay, so right now we have completed about 95%, more than 95% of the work right. and uh, we hope to finish it by November so that it will be ready for inauguration by the end of the year and uh, yeah, that's it. Right. Uh, uh, this uh, project has been in the making for long yeah. and what is expected to do is actually frame the horizontal link in the uh, Mumbai region. Now it is expected that you know once this project gets completed and it's up and running, yeah. that it was given much more fillip to the you know the economic development in the uh, Mumbai metropolitan region. Right. Tell us what are the sort of you know key benefits there you are looking forward oh, to. There are two types basically, actually quite unrelated. One is engineering wise, right. technology wise. This bridge is an engineering marvel, True. and uh, it has been in the making for long, as you rightly said. In fact, if there is one project I have to name in India which is most researched is this project, Mumbai Trans Harbour Link because it was happening for the last 50 years in the making and I was myself looking after it when I was in Road Development Corporation right. way back 15, 20 years, 15, 20 years back, 15 years back and uh, then it came to MMRDA. Then I remember I had, went to, I had been to Delhi for environmental clearance in 2012 or so. We got it also. Then we had to change it and all that. Now, what are the benefits? Benefits are number one, very very basic level, you are able to connect Mumbai to the mainland in 12 to 15 minutes, right. which otherwise takes hours, okay, at the very basic level. But this project has to be seen little differently. What it means is that Mumbai and islands as an island city, constrained by geography of an island city, that will be a thing of the past. So you are able to reach the mainland in 12 to 15 minutes means something. Means actually you are attaching a huge parcel of land to Mumbai. Right. See in Mumbai you can see the skyline. Actually it is jam packed, right? So no new new industry, no new service sector can effectively come because it's no longer, you know, it's it's very uneconomical many ways. Prices are very high. And for even residential purposes, right? So island city is also in dire need of renewal, urban renewal. So it will have two impacts, two types of impact. One is Mumbai's island city will get a big flip right. in terms of economic growth. And second is, of course, you know, Honorable Prime Minister is talking about $5 trillion economy now to beyond a point, after another two years again, 
seven trillion dollar economy, and we are talking about our deputy chief minister sir is talking about, and chief minister sir is talking about the one trillion dollar account for Maharashtra. In that, this bridge will have a major positive say, because what will happen if you can see the mainland, that is where industry sector, service sector, uh, you know, pharma hubs, and uh, residential hubs, you know, uh, logistics can come up. And uh, why could not they come up earlier? Because there was no connectivity. True. Once you are connecting to 10 to 15 minutes, which means that, you know, 10 to 15 minutes in Mumbai ways, right. I'll tell you, it means, you know what, in many times, from Burley to Nariman point takes 20 minutes. True. Right? Or let us say, Andheri East to Andheri West, it takes 20 minutes, right. many times. Right? So, 10 to 15 minutes means nothing. It means effectively, you are adding a huge land parcel, a virgin land, to Mumbai, which right. means just imagine, I have seen uh, projects like this, for instance, Incheon Bridge in Korea, right. but it is connected to airport, but here it is different, you are attaching it to Mumbai, city like Mumbai, so it is very unique in that sense, so it will be an engine of economic growth in short. Right. Uh, you know, Navi Mumbai uh, was formed uh, many decades ago, yeah. in order to take the relief of from, uh, you know, Mumbai, from the yeah. island city. Now for, the, uh, for Navi Mumbai, this is a great, uh, you know, boost. Connectivity yeah. boost. Navi Mumbai would also be, you know, uh, the upcoming uh, new Navi Mumbai uh, International Airport is uh, going to come up. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this particular project, you know, giving impetus to that uh, airport infrastructure, which will uh, anyway also create and sort of economic hub around its area as well? Yeah. See, when you land there, that side on the left hand side will be the new international airport, right. and the right hand side is the Mumbai Navi Mumbai that JNPT port. Right. Right. And Navi Mumbai is further north. Right, a little far away. So, Navi Mumbai area, and if, if I see the one way, the area around Panvel and south of Panvel is in for a huge economic growth, right. even Navi Mumbai as well. And uh, time is ripe for going ahead and creating growth centers True. all along. Right. And my last question is that you know, you have over two decades of experience in the infrastructure sector as an administrator. This project, which is now very close to completion, you know, your own, you know, personal view, your own personal, you know, assessment, how it has been for you. See, a project of this scale and complexity uh, cannot be done by any one person. If there is are two factors which are responsible for this project, see, I am just an instrument, two factors, two key uh, institutions, or one is Government of India, right. because such a project can't be done without the support of government of India. A full all credit to them, and uh, with honourable Prime Minister taking the lead and giving a lot of clearances and sovereign guarantees and all that. I still remember how difficult it is to get these things going. So it happened, right? So kudos to him and kudos to government of India for doing this. And secondly, actually, you know, government of India is also an entity, but state government has to actually put it forth. So that could not be done for decades to convince government of India to get clearances. So I still remember in 2017 when the thing was started, I was also actually quite uh, uh, happy about it, very, very happy. That is thing which I had dealt with a decade back right. by then. It is coming to true. I could not believe. So kudos to state government, the then state government and the present state government, which has uh, really laid the real foundation stone, you know. So these are the two factors. And we are just instruments. And on the other side is the team, you know, I have an excellent team. There are about 50 to 160 teams which are working in this project. But when it come to the project, we worked as a single team. Right. So all credit to the team. Right. So uh, thank you, Mr. Srinivas. It is, was a really much. pleasure talking to you. And, you know, you have taken out, out your time and spoken to us. Uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.